welcome to Talking All Things Business. I'm Faye Waterman, your host, and my guest tonight is Kay Hamilton. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Faye, very much for this opportunity to share my passion with you. Thank you. Now, Kay is a mum of four children and a grandma of six grandchildren. She lives in a beautiful part of the world known as Sisters Beach, a seaside beautiful place in Tasmania. Kay discovered Young Living Oils in 2010 where she made a decision to purchase her kit online. And at that stage, she hadn't even had smelt them. Upon opening the oils, Kay instantly knew that these were something special as the aromas were special and unique. Kay started sharing these oils with her family and friends who also experienced great results and fell in love with them immediately. From the, there, from there, Kay has taken a journey into the world of young living where she has created her own low-tox lifestyle using the full range of Young Living products. The oils integrated with her healing, the oils she has integrated with her healing modalities of Reiki, colour energy healing, along with crystals and vibrational healing. Since then she has come since then she has had some amazing experiences with Young Living, visiting several global Young Living farms around the world, as well as attending conferences in Utah. Kay is passionate about these Young Living oils, and I would like to ask Kay, why are you so passionate about these oils? Well, Faye, I guess it goes back to my earlier times where I was... Um, well, when I left home and I, I moved out on my own and I wanted to grow vegetables and have herbs in the garden and I was very aware of uh, the future of the world and I was very concerned about how things were going in our communities with overuse of, of all sorts of things. Toxic, pro toxic products. Things. products. Yes, to toxic products that we're using in our bodies and in our homes and I was very aware of sustainability and or the need for sustainability and um, I guess I was a bit of a granny in those days I lived in the bush and grew my own vegetables and I lived on a farm and um, coming across the oils in 2010 just ticked all those boxes of concern and um, you know the opportunity for sustainability and Young Living has sustainability uh, practices at the heart of their and they do don't they because mission. they grow their own um, flowers their own uh, product yes. for, to develop the essential oils a lot of our products are grown on our own farms or partner farms or sourced from farms that uh, adhere to our strict C to seal standards yes. yes so Kay what have you done over your life besides becoming involved with the oils you 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 were a teacher yes. and you still do a little bit of part-time teaching every now and then when they need you yes i'm doing relief teaching i'm um, transitioning away from my permanent position uh because well for quite a few reasons <laughs> i was i was um winning so many trips that i had to i had to resign from teaching because i didn't get enough holidays <laughs> that, that's, that's one line right. um but that is one of the reasons actually in fact but i i just had this passion for sharing essential oils because i think everybody needs something to help support a happy healthy lifestyle and it is a happy, healthy lifestyle, isn't it? It's, it's all about creating that environment where there's less toxicity around. Yes. There is uh, better products to use, particularly for our young children yes. who are growing up. Yes. Because all the products that we have used in the past uh, have been so toxic that they create illness regardless of whether we think they do or not. Yes, that's right. We, what happens is our bodies get to a level of um, so much absorption because, you know, we, we actually can't get rid of the toxicity that we have around us with um, hormone-disrupting chemicals in our home. It's in every, everywhere we 
we um, where we look, go, we're, yeah. everywhere we go, we're, everywhere we look, it's around. So if we are adding to that by putting <coughs> things on Excuse our me. skin and breathing things in that are potentially harmful and taking, um, you know, having food that's not organic and things like that, after our while our bodies knock on the door and say, "Excuse me, we've we're, we've had enough." And we're in overload, and that's when imbalance comes. And that's in. when disease happens yes, as well, doesn't yes, it? That's and, right. And yes. with all the stresses, my voice has gone funny. With all the stresses, <coughs> <coughs> that's right. So stress. <laughs> <laughs> with with all the stresses and things that go on in life, yes. then disease happens from that, doesn't yes. it? Well, the stresses are those kind of things, but also, yes, the mental stress. I think life is very busy these days and we all want to keep up with lots of things. We all have lots on the go we, and we're trying to do our best um, in whatever we do. And I think we have very high standards of what we all think we have to keep up with. And that's when imbalance comes into it. And along with the oils, I love using mindset affirmations, meditation, yoga, those kind of things all it all integrates so you would use certain oils with certain modalities uh, yes we have so many we have over 200 oils to choose from so there's a, you know like it's a it's a bouquet of uh, it's an ar mm. aromatic bouquet of things that we can choose from so I've got a couple here that I could just pull out there's some beautiful beautiful, beautiful um, names and blends here so I know that people are, are very aware of the importance of gratitude so there's this beautiful oil called gratitude and I will just open the um, top of it and I will place a, a drop in my hand would you like to try some i would plate? love to so you can just pop a drop in your hand and what we do oh. is circulate the oil circulate to activate it okay and then we can make an instant diffuser and breathe that in oh that and just smells so body good. that beautiful smell <laughs> it smells so divine. good so they're beautiful to work with and oh. you can just put them in your aura and you can use the intentions and Think about what you're grateful for um, every day. So I love to wake up in the morning and, and think about the things that I have gratitude for. And when you actually use the essential oil with those beautiful thoughts that you want to resonate, it actually amplifies that energetic, um, you know, flow of being able to receive through yeah. gratitude. So yeah. we, we have beautiful oils. So That is amazing. Yes. I mean... I do use Young Living Oils, so I'm a bit biased. Oh, I think you would and, be then. <laughs> and, yes. and I do diffuse them and yes. all the rest of it. So it's really interesting to, to you know, just have an appreciation of them like this because I don't usually use them on my body. I use them in the diffuser oh, okay. a lot of yes. the time. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about how how you use these oils so you know you can use them on your body you can put them on your wrist you know there's certain certain um oils that you can use if you feel like you're getting a cold or something like that but what is it that you do with the oils in other ways okay so one of our one of my favorite things to do is to use them in food and drinks so food and drinks yes young okay. man has so a range you, of culinary oils right and so, so Yes. Not all of them are culinary. Not all of them have been approved for culinary right. purposes. Okay. So we, we have a range that have been, um, we have approval to put them in our food and drinks to enhance the flavour. Right. And that's such a delightful thing to so do. So which ones? What, what? So in the morning, I, I would drink um, just a drop or two of lemon in my water. Right. And make sure you stir it around because the, the oil will float on the top of the glass. Right. So that's a really... Is it warm water or cool um, you can, water? Or... You can use either. So sometimes I will make a like a, a hot lemon drink and put some honey with it. Mm -hmm. Or um, peppermint is a really good one love too. Peppermint. Love peppermint. And yes. that's a nice one to diffuse in the um, office times or when, you've, you know, when you want that mental alertness. Um, one of my favourite mm -hmm. things to do is to add a drop to my 
um, salad dressings. Oh, really? So a drop of marjoram or sage or right, uh, black just, pepper. They're herbs. They're herbs. They? It's beautiful. Yeah. Basil or marjoram. Really? So we have a beautiful range. I grow those. Yes, you, you do grow them, <laughs> I'm sure. But there's that time of year where the, the plants look a bit straggly over yes, winter. Yes. And, you know, if you're travelling, you can't always take herbs. So with you can you. take a nice little bottle yes. of oil with you. Yes. Just this size, yes. which is really good to fit in your handbag. Yes, absolutely. So, so, yeah. One's never enough in my handbag that I, I have to <laughs> assure you, face. So I have little pouches. This is one that um, I have uh, here tonight to show face some of these, but I carry mine in a nice slender little pouch. All right. And I have quite an array of oils, and I even take a little uh, USB diffuser. So, if I'm staying in places, a USB diffuser. A diffuser. So, you can plug that into the wall or into your computer. And when you go and stay in hotels or something, if, if there's a bit of mustiness or the the air is not as fresh as you'd like and you're in an air-conditioned right. area, so you can... Uh, You've got this little yes, diffuser. I, yes, I have a little pack <laughs> and I take my diffuser with me. Beautiful. It's wonderful. And there's certain oils we take on the aeroplane. Right, You know how yes. the smells aren't all that great on planes. Yes, on yes. And it gets stuffy. Yes. Um, we have a little hand purifier that you can just carry and there's no nasties in that. It's yeah. aloe vera and a beautiful blend called Thieves. Yes, I love um, Thieves. Thieves is So, yeah, and then the other thing is I just, everything in my home comes from Young Living, from deodorants to shampoos and conditioners and face products. And even the makeup I'm wearing uh, is all natural. There's 100% minerals and there's nothing toxic in anything. Yeah. So, so it's wonderful. And I, I mean, you know, all these natural products that, that are available to to us. Yes. Some of us understand and know how to use them and mm. some of us don't. So how do you educate people to know about these oils? What is it that you do? So I do um, a lot of workshops where we have in, like, they're like a class or a lesson or a sharing, really. We, we you know, gather in groups of often women, not always women, but often women that love to get together and we share our stories of what we do. There are lots of recipes. I do Facebook Lives. I have a group um, on Facebook okay. of, of people who are in my team and it's also open to people who are interested in learning about oils. Right. Um, online webinars. Oh, just books or I know when I first got into it, I, I just couldn't get enough. So I just peeled the um, layers of uh, Facebook and Pinterest and oh, there is so many resources now out there. I know. It's just amazing. That is overwhelming in itself, yes, isn't yes. it? So you do colours. Now talk to us about the colours that so, you do. Okay, so I did some training in Orosoma, which is... Uh, some coloured bottles and it, it has her, the energies of herbs and crystals in it as well. And like just like people do card readings or whatever, I would use these little bottles of oils and the, the colours that you are drawn to tell me something about what's going on for you in your life. But I've evolved, um, I've, got, I've sort of taken that in on another tangent of my own. Okay, and so developed, what's that? So I do some colour therapy. Okay. Now, sort of, I actually um, call them activate your courage sessions and I will sit with somebody and we will get to the bottom of, of what's giving us our limiting beliefs. Oh. And we do some <laughs> transformation on that. Right. Bay so that um, I can now tune into colours in a person, probably their their aura or their energy, and we're on. I actually draw some some little sketches while that's happening. All right, okay. and then I use the oil. So I sometimes I do them via Zoom calls or in person. I can do it online or either way it yeah. works. Okay, and I use the oils and we and affirmations. So people go away with some affirmations and essential oil suggestion and. Hopefully, they've released some of those limiting beliefs and they can put some new programs in place because when you actually get to the bottom of what's happening, you can release it and then you can put in something new. Yeah, and, and, and when forward. you do put in something new, it's actually 
you have to be aware of it before you can make that change, well, don't you? Well, that does help when mm. you know, you know, you go back to a memory or something that's triggered a thought because we know we're very much aware now that as little children, we make decisions in our mind that, that, uh, that might be from a child's perspective or it might be from, you know, a heavier dose of abuse that you may have from the people around you and in yeah. your wherever you the are environment so the environment that you're living yeah. in maybe that home life wasn't so happy or or it might be just a simple incident that's happened that you've misunderstood but you've just locked a program in yes and and, and tagged a negative thought to that and as we do um transformational inner work these thoughts come up to be released and then you can actually look at them and go, well, actually, is that serving me? Not really. Mm -hmm. And let's find something else to replace that with to serve. Fabulous. And then, so if you take an essential oil um, with that, yeah. then uh, as an ongoing uh, support, you actually, when we use essential oils and we use them with intention, that actually magnifies the potential for us to do the transformation. Yeah. Okay. I need to start using my diffusing my oils specifically and yes. and actually using them more on my body that's a great idea yeah mm. than, than i do now yes yeah, yeah. okay that's a good idea okay. so what else do you do with these oils i mean you know there there are so many of them you said there are over 200 yes. different types of oils so how do they come up with all the different types of oils what is it that they do to make them make them natural yes non-toxic and you know ingestible yes. some of them so um gary young was quite an amazing person and he did a lot of research into uh, the growing and distilling of essential oils he went to france and learned how to distill from a master distiller there and he traveled around the world and um, stayed with people in their tribal settings right. and learned about the herbs they were right. growing or using or harvesting. And he, he asked lots of questions. He did lots and lots of research. And part of his journey also took him to Egypt where he went into the pyramids and was taken oh, into a room wow. there, um, into this little special room, this little chap came and said, you need to come and have a look in here. And when he went into that room, he saw all the uh, artwork in the rooms that was depicting the use of essential oils. Oh, really? And they use that for cleansing the spirits. So yes. um, Gary discovered, you know, so many things on his journey. And, oh, look, I, I could listen to him and I could listen to his stories for hours. Uh, Mary's written a beautiful book. In the, telling the story all about Gary and because he just started distilling oils in his own backyard. He was a very grounded person and that's what I love about Young Living too because it comes from such a solid background right. and he was, oh, I, I, you know, I don't really know what words to describe what kind of a person he is. Very amazing knowing what he did in, in quite a short amount of time to you know, create the top essential oil company in the world. So how old is he now? Well, unfortunately, we lost Gary last year. Oh, really? He died um, 12 months ago in um, 2018. He had been sick for quite some time. Uh, quite a few things had happened to him. And um, he lived a lot longer than many other people who have survived, who've experienced similar issues that he had had. And I think he would have also had complications possibly from the fact that he was actually paraplegic oh, in right. his early 20s. Really? Oh, you weren't aware of that. No. So he had a logging accident and he uh, couldn't walk and was told he would never walk again. Right. However, he managed to get himself back into good health. And along that journey... Did he ever walk again? Or oh, not? gosh, yes. Oh, really? Yes, yes, yes. He, that's, well, that's how... Oh. Not only did he just walk again, oh. he, he also, he, he was the man that put the chains on the, the wheels up at our farm up um, up in the snowy area where they um, have the Idaho balsam fir and he drove the trucks, he dug the holes, he, he was a very hands-on person. He was a farmer, came from a logging background, so he really actually 
was more comfortable when he was sitting on one of his horses yeah. than when he was on stage talking to thousands yeah. and thousands of people. But yet on stage, he was the most inspirational speaker. I've had the because privilege of hearing him yeah. several times and he was, he was always had some wonderful things. Because it came say. from his heart. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very much so. So he was very genuine and very yes. real and honest. Yes. Yeah, yes. About, and, and passionate yes. about what he was High doing. High integrity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where um, he took Young Living and it's one of the reasons why we've been so successful because he knew that the world of essential oils, um, not all oils are made equal. So no, he, they're not. He, he knows that a lot of oils are adulterated and that was something that he was, he knew that once they were adulterated, you actually were giving something, to, you were creating something toxic that was yeah. potentially harmful. Yeah, yeah. What an amazing man. Yes. yes. So what age did he live to? Uh, 68 he was. So 68. he died, uh, yes, a year mm. ago. A little like we've just passed his anniversary. Um, but uh, this year, in 2019, Young Living, we're actually I'm heading over to Utah in a few weeks. Oh, really? And we're having Lucky our 25th you. anniversary, so it's going to be a great big celebration. And I'm, I'm sure there'll be over 40,000 people all converging on wow. Utah. Every year that I've been, I've been, I think, five years now, and every year it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it's just wonderful. Yeah. So... You've had the opportunity with with working with the essential oils and all the wisdom and the expertise that you have to help other people solve issues and, you know, just use the oils in the way that they're meant to be used. So you educate people in that area yes, yes. to make sure that they use them and get the maximum benefit out and, of it. And safety is very important too because they're very potent. They're very strong um, and we don't want people to be, you know, using them in the wrong way. And mm. um, I think that's very an very important part of, you know, using them effectively. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. So you also do Reiki. Do you use the oils? Do you, do you diffuse the oils when you're doing Reiki? Or Yes, I would have a diffuser going in the room, but I would also use something like frankincense around the person and then... Also, if I'm doing Reiki and I feel led to bring an essential oil into the session, I will bring essential oils into the session. And then often I'll end with something with one called White Angelica, which is just the most beautiful blend. And you can just, you know, put it on my hands and just touch the person's shoulder, or I will just put it over their, over their um, like crown an, chakra yeah. or in their aura. And, you know, maybe just hold my, cut my hands over their face so they can smell that beautiful aroma. Mm. And people really love it. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I mean, I love my oils. Yes. I don't use them probably like I need to use them or could use them mm -hmm. to the maximum benefit. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to teach me. Yes. So using them with intention, that's yes. the, the most powerful way. So it's, it's like a prayer or an affirmation. Um, so when you're using your gratitude oil, you could also be thinking about what you're grateful for. I could use that while I'm writing my gratitude. Absolutely. Write your gratitude yeah. journal with your gratitude. Every day yes. I do that. Yes. Yeah. Um, one of my favourite ones is magnify your purpose. Right. So that's, uh, you know, what I discovered really was that the oils actually gave me such an inner transformation. Right. Uh, like In other, what way? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I had no intention to um, run a business with it, with Young Living. That was I just wanted some beautiful things to put on my body that smelt nice, that were not going to be like a toxic, a toxic like per perfumes are not yeah. so good for us. And people no. are starting to wake up to these things now. You know, using a perfume and putting it on your on your skin. It, it absorbs into your bloodstream within 10 seconds. So, yes. you know, and there's a lot of toxicity yes. within yep. a perfume. It doesn't matter how nice it smells. Yes. It does affect you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. It's like putting on makeup and, yes. and that sort of thing. It absorbs into your skin. Yes. In a matter of seconds. Yes. Mm. And that's when our bodies, you, if you think about makeup, food, smells from your carpets, your vinyls, mm. your paint, um, 
you know, They're all, all your body products, you put your washing your hair in shampoo and the opening all, all, the, the, pores. all the pores. And then if you just, you know, most shampoos are not so good for, for us. Um, our toothpastes. Yeah. Um, full of, oh, I heard the story that some toothpastes have BPA beads in them. And I'm thinking, oh, and the plastic beads in them, the gel toothpaste. And I thought, oh my gosh, I hope that's not true. But that, um, somebody was, I was at a talk the other week and someone was telling us about that. So, you know, things are hidden in a but lot of products. But you don't know. And you look at products and you look at um, what's on them. And I can't read any of that because yes. it's all too small. Too but you, you know, the first product on the uh, first, yeah, first thing in, in any of in anything uh, that's listed yeah, the, is yes. water. Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot. Yes. In, and you look at makeups, you look at skincare yes. and things, mm -hmm. the most, and it goes from the most to the least. Yes. And water is one of the, mo the yes. highest. Yes. And, and, it, and I think what the cost is the packaging. It's not the product itself. Oh, it's yeah, the actual it packaging. It can well be that, yeah. that way too. But, you know, looking at these and thinking about believe, mm. no, that's what would you use believe for? Well, that was, that's very good when you're going through those times where you, you know, you might feel Can challenged. Little, yes, 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 sure. So you might feel challenged or you might feel that you can't do something, you can't achieve something. So I'm thinking what's just come to mind is, you know, maybe a teenager who's about to sit some exams and yes. they go through those times where they think, oh, you know, I'm just not going to make the distance and... You know, and that I, is a belief in it. themselves, isn't it? It's a it? belief in themselves. Yeah. And that can be from, from anyone. It might be somebody who's, you know, going through a bit of a hiccup. I know for me, I went through a marriage breakup and I, at the time I was, you know, very um, devastated. I had three young children and I, don't, and I didn't really know how I was going to support myself. I didn't believe that I could do it. So that's an example of a good time to use something like believe. Yeah. And, yeah. and I've got one here. I just picked it up and it says common, common sense. sense. Yes. <laughs> okay. Come yes. on. Co common sense. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, common, sense. common sense is one of those things that, you know, we often wonder how common it really is. So that's going to ground you. It's going to bring you back into a sense of, you know, giving <laughs> you the ability to make um, really good decisions that aren't outlandish and over the top. It's going to, you know, just, Give you, bring you back, bring your energy back, keep you grounded and give you the potential of Do you reckon I've got any hope? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Actually, there is a blend called hope, but I don't have it with me. But, <laughs> Inspiration. Uh, yes. Inspiration. So what time would you use that when you, yes. you've come to a deadlock in something or you, or you think you, you either don't know what to do with yourself and you want some ins inspiration yeah. or you might be... You might know what you want to do, but you're not quite sure how to do it. So yeah. you could diffuse inspiration or artists might like to use inspiration right. when they're creating some artwork. Right. Okay. And there's one here called Higher Unity. Uh, that is absolutely beautiful. So I've got to, I have yes, to smell them all. This, yeah, that's great. So this one was oh created. God. Yes. And most of these blends are created by Gary. He was a master at creating blends so what would you how would you use that so this one i would um put on like we did before and yep. make a little diffuser or sometimes i put them in this is a little diffuser here oh really so i can so you can you unscrew this there's different types of diffusers and that that unscrews too and there's and i put it pop a few drops of oil in that so i will um wear this and i know my grandchildren all pop up on me and they they know that I often wear diffusers. So even if it's a crystal or something <laughs> I'm wearing, they'll pick it up to try and smell it. So right. just this, just invoking that um, sense of that's, you know, just bringing that smell up to you just invokes this, a, a, a scent, depending on the oil sense, a, some calming or oh. uplifting or re yeah. relaxing or, or be, being able to breathe. So we have some oils that might, you know, help you to breathe breath. when you when your breath. Yes. And yes. Um, so, say you've got a cold or something. We have a beautiful one called Breathe Again that we and I'll just roll this down the side here, and you can just, you know, you can just feel its yeah. power just yeah. instantly. Yeah. You know, 
clearing the, the yeah. airways. Yeah, and, and you have one called fees and I always find that if you feel like you're getting a cold or something, you can yes. utilise that. There's a spray and there's also the oil itself. Yes, I love to put Thebes oil on my feet every day at this time of year just to keep myself um, fortified and uplifted. And, you know, because if we want to stay well, it's like, um, you know, we put oil in the car, we give our cars maintenance, yeah. we do all these things, we, we clean the house or we do whatever it is to make us cheery. Well, we need to nurture <laughs> our bodies. I don't like cleaning the house, but a nice no, me a clean house <laughs> always makes you feel fresh and spacious. It does. It does. So, but using oils to me is a way of, uh, it, it, you know, it supports that self care and that self nurture and self health is really a, something that I love to promote. And so, when you, I, I mean, I know I diffuse oils and I put them in the diffuser, and I might use a bit of lemon lemon and yes. something else it doesn't matter i just choose things yes. and i just combine them together right. and i just right. smell them and i think yes. and i walk into the room and i think oh yes that is so good yes so you know even that is a calming feeling absolutely so you, you you're relaxing that inner self uh they've done some studies um that show that smell is one of the most powerful ways to release some of those negative emotions. So when we smell an oil, it goes in through the limbic system of our brain and right into the amygdala at the back, which is where we store all our past memories. Right. And so then if we've got past memories that are in there that have trauma attached to them, which we all do, we've all had trauma. It might at be some stage at in some our life. Stage, we some stage, Some larger than others, yes. yes. So the essential oils help to release those feelings and I believe that's what's happened to me through using these oils. It's given me that inner transformation. Right. I, I mean, I'm from a teaching background, primary school teaching, which is nothing like um, supporting people with essential oils. And I'm now in a position where I'm supporting other women or other people to grow a business and um, use, you know, with, with the oils. So I've done huge transformation. Huge. And huge changes in mindset and yeah. thinking and way of life, um, stepping away from teaching yes. and moving into the area of creating a business with this. Yes. Because the other thing is with something like this, because it's my passion and something I really love, I can go, I don't have to think, well, at 65, I'm going to retire and that's the end of my working life. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. Oh, there's no chance of that. There's no chance of that. No, no. Chance so, of that. And I'm not very good at sitting at home watching television or, uh, you know, just having a, well, for some people that's fine. But for me, I feel like I have a bigger vision and, you know, I want to make a difference in the world and I know that, Young Living is um, definitely a beautiful train to be driving uh, to, you know, create some of those changes. And it comes from the heart, doesn't it? Oh. it it's, it's sort of something that comes from the heart. So you're yes. doing what matters to you. Yes. And you're doing what you know will make a difference, not only to yourself, yes. but people close to you, family, your friends, your grandchildren, yes. people like that, because mm. you're educating them yes. to use the oils in the way that they need yes. to be used. Yes. And then you are educating other people to use the oils so that they can get the best advantage of them. Yes. But you're also helping women who are at home, at a loss, mm -hmm. not knowing what to do, giving them an opportunity to be able to find something to do using the oils even if they don't go out and sell them they can use them themselves yes and you know share them with their family mm -hmm. well you know this is a an interesting business because when they do the um the data on the people um who are growing businesses most of the people in young living don't come to young living because they want to grow a business they come to Young Living because they're looking for something that's going to support their family um, in their health and happiness. Yeah. And then what happens is some sort of a switch clicks on for many of us and we 
We don't want to just keep it to ourselves. Yeah. We we have this desire you want to share it. To share it. <laughs> and then before you know it, one thing's um, leads to another and you're starting to go, Wow, I can have some abundance in my lifestyle and I can have some financial abundance. Um, the other thing is that we we're a community, we're a big family, we're a global family, and that's something that I really love as well. So I've got I've I've got so many new friends now. All globally. Around, globally, <laughs> yes. I know you've done lots of travelling. <laughs> yes. How yes. many times have you been overseas since you joined Young Living? Um, I've actually been, I think it's eight trips overseas and I've won all of those, which has also been something that's just been magnificent and something that very humbling and something extremely unexpected because... I didn't think that, that that I would ever have that opportunity. And um, I've actually had the privilege to visit, gosh, uh, um, our farm in Utah several times. And I've gone to our partner farm in Hawaii where we grow the Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood. And that was just absolutely amazing yeah. to listen to the stories of um, the families there that are, that are harvesting the Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood. And... And it's all to do with sustainability, and yeah. that's the that's the magic for me. And where else did I? I've been to France, where we've got the biggest lavender farm in all the world, right. and we have a cooperative there as well. And I went to Croatia, wow. where we grow helichrysum. And because we've got helichrysum in Croatia, and, and because of Gary's dedication and persistence in his mission. Uh, it is now being taken off the endangered species list. Oh, wow. Because so it was being you... over-harvested. Right. So what mm. do you use it for? Um, it's a good one for skin. It's a good one for creating um, transformation and well, just lots of lots and lots of, lots different, of different things. things. Yes. Yeah. You can't know. remember so it's, all it's of a, them, can it's you? It's a fixative in perfume. <coughs> so it's, excuse me, what... What often happens is because perfume's high demand in the perfume industry, yes. you know these, you know these plants are being harvested, and yet there hasn't been people like Young Living, and well, there are some people, but not so, not so many looking into the sustainability, and that's why Gary wanted to grow a lot of things on his own farms yeah. because sustainability is um, the key to, you know, the future. Mm. And not we have our own farm there, but we also support 450 families in Croatia because they grow helichrysum and then we, we distill it, purchase right. it from them and distill yeah. it. So wherever Young Living goes and has farms... It creates we, work for the people within the community. Exactly. So that's, it that's is right. community-driven, isn't it? And yes. you said that you have the largest lavender farmer. I love yes. diffusing lavender. Yes, yes. So, it's my favourite. Yeah, that's wonderful. So the other thing about Young Living is that we only grow from seed to seal. So, well, sorry, we have a seed to seal promise, which means that we know where our seeds come from. Right. And all our plants are grown from seed. We don't use cuttings. Right. So that was one something that Gary really insisted on. Because when you grow things from seed, you actually um, get a, a, an extra bouquet of, oh, how do I say it? Uh, so it's different, so, isn't it's it? It's different. It's not, no, it's not okay. like cloning something. So every plant's not going to be the same. They're right. all going to have different um, variants, which actually... Um, Complements. Exactly. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's great use of words. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a much more it'll give you a bit of value of oil. Okay. So if you were going to, um, to have a conversation with someone about oils yes. and they knew nothing about it, where would you start? I would just say, go and get yourself a kit just like I did run. and start on the run because, you know, you, you, the, the, Actually, the best place to start is to open the lid and smell it. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And that's what Gary taught us as well. If you don't know what oil to use or how to use it, open the bottle and smell it. And then his next statement was, just <sighs> let your intuition to tell you what you want to do with that oil. 
I love smelling oils. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm going to get more of my oils out and just sit them around the house. Oh, I hope I've inspired you. I've got oils in my bathroom, in my kitchen, um, in the lounge room, next to my bed, in my handbag. I don't go anywhere without an oil. And it's so um, amazing because everybody who's in Young Living or people who start using essential oils, <laughs> I don't know what we did without them. <laughs> It's a, bit like, it's a bit like mobile, mobile phones yes, and, the, yes. and all that. It's, it's in the same category as, <laughs> as a mobile phone. Because <laughs> you'll find that people who use essential oils now never use perfume. Yes, actually, yes, that's, that's what happens. And what also happens is that you're, because our oils are so pure and there's no nothing added, um, nothing taken out of them and they're all first distillation, it gives them this... Um, a quality, and I don't think words can really uh, explain it, but the bouquets of them are just stunning. And as time goes on, you lessen, you become more and more aware of an oil that is not of, yes. of the same colour. Yes, calibre. you do. You do, actually. And, and also um, the smells. I'll go into shops where there's a, where, you know, where there are fragrances and when, if the word fragrance is on a product, my alarms, bells go up because you know a fragrance really doesn't tell you much. <laughs> it's usually been adulterated. Yeah, so yeah. you know, I my tolerance for those, my nose is it's become. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Uh, there is a word, um, often knowledge. There is a word for the art of smelling with your nose. I can't, oh, really? I can't quite think what it is. I'll have to investigate. Yes, yes. I can't remember what it is, but I know Gary became very good at that, and he could smell an oil and he could tell you all sorts of things just by smelling the oil. Mm, yeah, and, and it is an art, isn't it? And it and it's something that's developed over many years. Yes, it's not something yes. that happens overnight. Yes. Well it's like anything, isn't it? Yeah. When you the more you practice it, it's like a muscle that you yeah. that you yeah. that you're growing or something. That's yeah. exactly right. So if you were good to give three tips for people to use oils what would be the first one? Uh, the first one would be to make sure that it comes from a good source and do your homework on that because yes. that's very important. Because they, they can tell you all sorts of things, but they're not true. Yes. So yes. you need to make sure that you've done your research on where, you, where they're coming from, all those things I mentioned, how they're grown and how they're distilled. There's, whole, there's a whole array of things around that. I know Gary, for example, likes a cone on the distill, like even the shape on the di on the still of how it's they're the particular still yeah. you know, different shapes. So, um, so yes, make sure you're getting a really good product. Find somebody who's using an oil, like um, you know, you can contact me and I could talk to you. Um, so, and somebody who's passionate about it. Yeah, someone that you re you can and relate to. And someone who uses them and understands them. Yes. Yes. Um, and. Do your own research. There's lots of research on um, online that we can all ex access about essential oils and how they're used and what they're used for. And there's lots of studies um, that's, that anyone can jump on and, and have a look. And there's lots of books and things like that. Fabulous. And so using essential oils, you can use them, you use, you use them with your Reiki. You use them with your colour... What do you call it? Colour? Colour energy healing. Colour energy healing. Yes. And what else? Um, oh, massage. 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 Yeah. Diffuse them. Cooking. Cooking. Cleaning. We have a whole drinking. cleaning range. Drinking. <laughs> yes. A drop or two in your drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, you can make lavender ice cream. You can, you know, like a, lots of things in your curries and yes. So that's the colour. So there's range. all there's all those sorts of oils that you can actually add into your curries and things yes, like that. Yes, yeah, so uh, black pepper or or um, if if you're cooking a soup, just one drop of oregano. You don't need much; they're very pure. So you only need a drop or two. You don't go yeah. over board yeah. with them. Otherwise, you well, they're yeah. very potent. Yes, mm. yeah, because they overdo it. Yes, beautiful. Well, thank you, Kay, for your wisdom My and expertise pleasure. and the giving the um, 
the tips, you know, if you want to use the oils, it's a good thing to talk to someone who's experienced such as Kay to, have, to get the information to understand how to use them. And if you use them the right way, then you will get the benefits out of them. So um, how can they contact you, Kay? Um, uh, will you put it? Can I put a link with this? Yes, I can. But just group. tell them. Just so tell I, them now. So I have a Facebook group called Kay's Essential Oil Wisdom, and my name on Facebook is Kay Hamilton. And there's not too many Kay Hamiltons on Facebook. With <laughs> lovely silver flowing hair. <laughs> so you can find me easily, I'm sure. Or I have a, a website uh, which is www.myyl.com com right slash k a y no e hamilton and um beautiful so reach out to me uh find me on facebook um i'm always up for a chat <laughs> she is so, she's always up for a chat so i'll uh, you know just contact me and we can set up a time for a, a conversation a yeah. conversation yeah and actually if uh, just on the spur of the moment yeah if anyone does contact me and decides to get a, a kit of oils um, through me, I actually have like a little welcome pack, and I might give you a, a special bonus one to one little session. So I'd love to Beautiful. give you a special. Well, there I you go. Is that okay? That is wonderful. Thank you so much, Kay. That's been a pleasure, Kay. Yes. Yeah, so this is Talking All Things Business, and I'm Faye Waterman, your host, and my guest, Kay Hamilton. And if anyone wants to contact Kay, have a look on Facebook. She is there and she has a website as well. So bye for now and until next time. Bye. Bye. bye.